Hey everybody, welcome to Small Family Adventures. This is Stephen, and it's time for devotions. And uh, we are here. Hopefully the camera will do its thing on the first try. But either way, we're going to get this done. And uh, we are studying in the book of Luke, and we're looking at Jesus' ministry. And this is a continuation from last week's chapter 11, as far as the, in the conversation. Um, so this is going to be good. Um, so Jesus has been talking to the Pharisees. And, um, oh, hold on. Who am I? I am Stephen. I am the husband, father, and um, in this house, and uh, and uh, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a, a teacher that's been to school to learn, but I've been studying God's Word for years and reading it. And why am I doing this? Well, do I want to put on video my devotions for the family and anybody who, who wants to join in. We are looking at God's Word. Why? Because it is a light unto our feet. It's going to help us walk, how to live, how to love people, how to, to live for God and do what's right. And so um, that is what we have. I have I am using for the paper copy NIV, which is the national inter, the new international version. I prefer when I'm reading digital, the ESV, uh, which I usually go to BibleGateway.com for that. Um, so if you don't have a Bible, you can go to BibleGateway.com and, and look up, go to Luke. Um, you can also go to Job 38. We're going to go to that later on. but So you can put your finger in there. But right now, we're going to primarily be in Luke 12, and we're going to do the first 12 verses today. And, uh, and the title of today's uh, uh, devotion is Code of Conduct. So here Jesus is. He's talking. He's got, we're going to find out that there's multitudes of people crowding around him. And, and the Pharisees are there. His disciples are there. He's going to talk to his disciples. Not sure if that's the 12 or the 70. Um, remember, he had, his, he had his 70 that he sent out, right? And then he also had his really close-knit friends um, that were closer, um, the 12 disciples. And um, so we're not sure because it doesn't tell us there. But um, it, there was a crowd, so I imagine it was the 70. But who, who again, we don't know for sure. So, but again, today's is about code of conduct. How are we to act? And, um, and again, remember last week in chapter 11, he went after the Pharisees because, um, because of the way they were. And he's going to, he's going to challenge them again and, and use them as an illustration to his disciples. Uh, let's start at Luke 12, 1. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak. That's a lot of people. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast, um, other translations, leaven, uh, the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So uh, this is the first code of conduct that Jesus is talking about in these 12 verses. The first one is no hypocrisy. Let's read on. Um, uh, we'll start again when he starts talking. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. So you can be a hypocrite. You can think you're getting away with something, but it, you're not. Everything will become out. So um, what's done in the dark will become out in the light. People will know. It's going to happen sometime. So better, to not, better not to be a hypocrite and to live truthfully and right. All right? There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends... Uh, and he goes on to the next thing, all right? Um, um, uh, something was lost in the translation here. Let's see. Because I have as part of my code of con conduct, do not imitate the malicious And um, as the next one. And I'm not seeing it here in the verse. Let me see.
Okay, it's in the next verse that I haven't read yet. Verse 4. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after killing the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Um, so, you know, I put that in there. Do not imitate the malicious. Um, and I got that, and I'll have to go back and look at that again um, um, from uh, Matthew Henry's commentary on this section. I'll have to see. Maybe I, I took that out wrong. But, you know, it's not a bad code of conduct. It's just not really here. Um, um, we don't have to, what it is saying is we don't have to be afraid, um, of those who could kill us. Actually, we should be more afraid of the one who could kill us because, um, as Christians, those who could kill us here, they can do it once and it's just temporal. Once we're dead, we're with God, we're, we're with God, but we need to fear and um, and uh, we need to fear and the one who could who could actually kill us fear him who after the killing of the body has power to throw you into hell yes I tell you fear him are not five sparrows sold for ten pennies yet not one of them is forgotten by God indeed the very hairs on your heads are all numbered don't be afraid you are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. All right, so in there, um, we, we are to live and, and live justly and live right. We are to, to not have hypocrisy, do not have hypocrisy, um, but we are to be truthful. We are to fear God. Um, who Who is God? Right? Who is God? How, is, how are we supposed to fear him? And that's where I want to go to Job 38. Whenever I see that it talks about fearing God, I actually, in my mind, go back to this passage. And um, Job actually, I believe, lived way before Israel was. Way before Israel. Maybe during the time of Abraham, I, is, I heard. Um, I don't know if that is true or not, but, but this is a very, very old book. And um, Job was tested. God allowed the devil Satan to test Job. Job lost everything. Um, and his friends came and, and, and gave him wind burned. They just talked to him and told, you know, you're a sinner, blah, 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 blah. And you can read that, read the book of Job. It's all documented there. Um, and then Job goes through this discourse uh, on, you know, and, and just why God and, and did I not and, and all this, right? Well, the Lord in verse 38, or chapter 38 of Job, comes to him and says, hey, here, this is who I am. And um, so the Lord answered, this is verse 1 of chapter 38, then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. Therefore, you see, out of the storm, he said, who is it that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. He goes on to four chapters of this. We don't have time for that. So if you want to read it, you can read it. I'm just going to skip through and do sections, okay? Um, uh, 38 verse 2, uh, uh, 3, I mean, uh, 
brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me, if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy, who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the cloud its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and I set doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no further. Here is where you, where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders in the morning and shown the dawn its place that it may take the earth by edges? I'm going to skip forward. Um, what is the way to the abode of light? Where is it kept? And where does darkness reside? Can you take them to? Can you take them to their places? Do you know the paths to their dwellings? Surely you know, for you are already born. You have lived so many years. Kind of a little mocking there. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? Uh, moving on, uh, let's start at chapter 39. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch where the doe bears her fawn? Do you count the months till they bear? Do you know the time they give birth? They crouch down and bring forth their young. Their labor pains are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds. They leave and do not return. Uh, verse 19 of 39. Do you give the horse his strength or clothe his neck with a flowing mane? Do you make him leap like a locust, strike terror with his proud snorting? He paws fiercely rejoicing in his strength and charges into the fray. He laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. He does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against his side along with the flash and spear and lance. In frenzied excitement, he eats up the ground and... Um, he cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet, he snorts, Aha! He catches the ascent of battle from afar, the shout of the commanders in the battle cry. Moving on, uh, chapter 4. The Lord said to Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him? That's how God ends it. And then Job talks to him. But again, the reading of that is to show how great, and that doesn't even capture how great our God is. That is what he chose to reveal to us. You know, he was there at creation. He knows. He knows what holds back everything. More than that, we need to fear him because he's in control, right? He's the creator. He's God. He can say, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. Now, he chose us before the foundation of the world that we should walk blamelessly in his sight. That's how we're Christians. That's how it started. So, he could easily say, go to hell. You know? And he would have no course but to say, you know, be, be true, because we are sinners, right? So, fear him. It's a godly fear. It's true. It's proper. We need to, to know that he's still a loving God. He cares for us, right? But we need to fear him. We need to um, I think of uh, how C.S. Lewis put it with Aslan. Um, he's not a tame lion, <laughs> you know? You can't tame him. God cannot be tamed. He cannot be held in a box. He's bigger than all us. He's the creator. So fear God. Let's move on. Um, chapter 12. Fear, let's see. Let's move on. Indeed, the very hairs of our head are numbered. You know, taking a cue from Job. I don't know. We're, we're in 38 there. You know, he's again, he knows the very number of hairs we have. He knows when we lose a hair. Oop, that one's gone forever. <laughs> That's not going back on there without a miracle. Um, you know, so he cares about us. He knows the sparrows. He knows when they fall, when they die. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of men. 
we don't have to be afraid of men. So our code of conduct, no hypocrisy, fear God. All right? Um, what's his name? Uh, Matthew Henry said, arm yourself with courage. Do not be afraid. All right. Um, verse eight. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. Matthew Henry put this as own Christ, confess Christ, lift him up. Yes, I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the way. Own Christ. Lift him up. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Be faithful to what you have been given. We've been given the Holy Spirit. He's a helper. He's a helper. And in verse 12, it says, For the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what you should say. Verse 11, before that, When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Wow. You know, we don't we just we don't need to worry. Do not be afraid. Fear God. Own Christ, confess Christ, and then bold in preaching. We need to be bold. And, and just, you know, there are people who need him. Why are we preaching? We are preaching, or what are we preaching? The good news, that Jesus Christ came to save us from our sin. He paid the price for our sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we should have died, but in Christ we live. So... That's good news. So we preach this. We tell people this. We build relationships one with, with people around us. And as the Holy Spirit leads, we tell people about it. What makes you different? Oh, let me tell you. I, I was so lost in sin, you know, but God saved me, you know. He saved me from my sin, and now I have so much joy. That things are tough sometimes. Things are rough. But you know what? I am happy. I know that one day this will all pass. And there will be no tears. There will be no sorrow. There will be joy, peace, love, kindness. So we just need to preach. We need to give. So the code of conduct. No hypocrisy. In other words, don't imitate the malicious. I think that's what Matthew Henry was saying. Don't be like the Pharisees. Because remember, he, he brought up the Pharisees, right? Don't, do not imitate them. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Why? Because nothing is concealed. It'll come out. I wonder if there's any Pharisees that heard that and went, Ooh, you know, gulped. Um... <laughs> You know, I just don't know. Hypocrisy, what? Lying? So, code of conduct, no hypocrisy. Don't imitate the malicious. No lying. Be faithful to what you have been given. Arm yourself with courage. Do not be afraid. Fear God. Own Christ. Confess Christ. And eight, bold in preaching. Be bold in preaching. 
but I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher, and here I am. These devotions are for my family, but I'm putting it out here for anybody who wants to listen. And uh, take it, read the Bible, see if what I'm saying is true. I'm a human being. I may have it wrong. This is the lens that we go through. This is is what the person you're listening to is what they're saying is true. Don't take them at their word. In the old, old churches, they would have a preacher or somebody who would read the Bible, and it was up high. Why was it up high? This was the highest, because this is God's word. This is what he chose to communicate to us. And, um, and then at the same time, we don't have much of it today. Some people have it on, on their electronics. But people would bring their Bible, and they would watch, and they would make sure that the reader would get it right. You do the same, okay? Make sure I get it right. Make sure whoever you're sitting under, whoever you're listening to, whoever whoever is teaching you, gets it right. Check yourself. Are you getting it right? Um. Many preachers say they don't want to listen to their older sermons because they have come along and have learned to correct their thinking from when they were younger. It's okay to change that. And I'm just off on a tangent now. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to say a prayer from, from the Valley of Vision, which if this is your first time um, having devotions here with us, uh, it is a collection of prayers and devotions from the Puritans. And um, and before I actually read it, there's two things that jumped out at me. Um, the last two lines, when you are absent, all sorrows are here. And it's talking to God. When you are present, all blessings are mine. And the whole thing is broken up into this, that great are these things that God has given. Gifts, really. Great was your goodness, love, mercy, wisdom, and grace. We serve a great God. He is a loving God. Remember last week we said he's a good, good father, or the week before, he's a great God. He's the creator. He knows he's in charge because he created it. And he's going to set everything right. We are not stuck in this. All right, so page 55, it's listed as victory. There is a word in there, secure, S-U-C-C-O-R, or in the British uh, English, C-C-O-U-R at the end. And that means to help in a time. So in this case, it'll be to help in a time of temptation. So we're going to read and then we'll head out, okay? O oh, divine reader, great was your goodness in undertaking my redemption and consenting to be made sin for me and conquering all my foes. Great was your strength in enduring the extremities of divine wrath and taking away the load of my iniquity. Great was your love in manifesting thyself alive and showing your sacred wounds that every fear might vanish and every doubt be removed. Great was your mercy in ascending to heaven and being crowned and enthroned, there to intercede for me, there to secure me in temptation, there to open the eternal book, there to receive me finally to yourself. Great was your wisdom in devising this means of salvation. Bathe my soul in rich consolations of your resurrection life. Great was your grace in commanding me to come hand in hand with you to the Father, to be knit to him eternally, to discover in him my rest, to find in him my peace, to behold his glory, to honor him who is alone worthy and giving me the spirit as teacher, guide, power, that I may live repenting of sin, conquering Satan, find victory in life. 
When you are absent, all sorrows are here. When you are present, all blessings are mine. Dear friend, brother and sister in Christ, have a good week. I don't know what it's going to give us this week, but I pray that you go with God. I'll pray for you, okay? You pray for me, and uh, be rest assured the Father has a stronghold on us. He will not let us go. He's holding on to our hands. He will not let us go. He loves us with an eternal love. He loves his people. Go with God. And I will see you next time, okay? From our family to yours. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next time. Bye.